there. Uh, my name is Katie Ofenlock, and I am a second grade teacher at Glen Allen Elementary School. Uh, welcome to our class. We are um, starting a research project on severe weather. The children chose their topics on what they would like to research, and they use different resources like Pebble Go and an epic library co collection, as well as Britannica Online. Um, and then what they did was they discovered three facts that they wanted to tell. And they're creating nonfiction um, online ebooks. And it's going to be used with an application called uh, Book Creator. And so they've thought of a topic sentence and they've thought of a conclusion sentence and headers. But one of the most exciting things is that they are taking what they've learned about text features and they're placing these text features, such as table of contents and glossary at the front and the back of their books. So instead of just locating and identifying these concepts, they're actually going to be making and creating them part of the Henrico Learner Profile. So they're creating and they're communicating to their reader important facts and they also want to make these nonfiction texts not only informational but fun and interesting. So welcome to our class again. All right, so boys and girls, what we're going to do is we're actually going to look up here at the Promethean board and kind of see some of the books or journals that you guys have already created um, with Mr. C and myself over the weekend. So these are our journals, which means that we're going to continue to place our work in these journals because does anybody remember, can you raise your hand and tell me how many books do we get per kid on Book Creator? Barrett? We get one, well, we get 40 total, but we get one for each of you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and how many students do we have in this class? 21. Thank you for raising your hand, Tucker. 21. 21. We have 21 books. Now, if you look up here, we have Ophenlock, and it says 22. That means that somebody in this class created a book. Who created a book? Jordan? Yeah. I did. So we're going to look up here and we're going to use kind of my example to help you guys. But first, what I would like you to do is would you please scroll down with how many fingers? Two. Two. Scroll down with two fingers and see if you can find the Book Creator app. Remember, it's a very colorful looking uh, book, the icon. Once you've found it, go ahead and click it. If you found it, Go ahead and put your hand on your head. If you have any problems, go ahead and raise your hand and I will help you. Excellent. All right, then what I want you to do is go ahead and see if you can find your book. There's an arrow down at the bottom. Do you see the arrow down at the bottom? Yeah. That will help you scroll through to find your book. All right, go ahead and click sign in with Google. On your screen, you only have your book. But if I scroll through my screen, I have many different books. Look at that, all right? So I'm gonna go back to my book so you can kind of see it. And I'm gonna click on this little icon that has the pencil, which means to edit. So if you wanna go ahead and click on your edit button, go, go ahead and do that. We have your, your beginning journal page that shows me and shows everybody else that this is your big journal. All of our creations are gonna happen in this journal, okay? But we wanna start our nonfiction book. And Mr. C actually helped us on Friday go through and find pictures, right? Yeah. So how do we turn the page? Raise your hand if you remember how to turn the page. Erin? Very good. You click the little arrow that's right on the side. So go ahead and flip your book page. And once you do, some of you guys are going to see your pictures that you Googled and inserted. Some of you guys might not because you didn't really get a chance. So let's review how we insert a photo into a page. Let's see if we can remember. Does anybody remember how we can put a photo into our page? What do you think, Tanner? 
Okay, good. So he clicked the plus. Whenever we want to add something to the page, we can click the plus. So go ahead and click the plus. Let's see what that looks like. Do you see anything on there that says media? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and find the media. So we're gonna click on the plus right here. And then we're gonna find that word right there, media. Good job, right here, good. All right, so on my screen, here's my plus sign. I'm gonna click on the tab that says media and I'm gonna click where it says import. It's the very first one. Go ahead and click import. All right, click the, click the, oops. Then we're gonna type in a picture or we're going to type in um, the severe storm that we're looking for. So if you guys looked up blizzard or you looked up dust storm or you looked up thunderstorm, go ahead and type that word in there. And then we're going to go ahead and hit the magnifying glass. So if I was looking up blizzard, I would type in blizzard. If we don't remember how to spell it, what can we look at to help us? Bear it? Your rough draft. All right, now some of you may already have one picture on your page already. Is it okay to have more than one picture? Yes. Absolutely. Have you seen nonfiction books that have more than one picture on a page? Yeah. yeah, it actually makes it more interesting. So go ahead and pick a different picture or your first picture. Very good. All right, click one picture and then you're going to click the little blue button that says select. Go ahead and click that little blue button that says select. Now, some of you noticed that there was a little bit of a problem where your picture was too big. What can you do to resize your picture? What can you do to resize your picture, Jay Shree? Um, you have to click it real hard, and you gotta pinch it on the screen. Okay, so you don't have to click it too hard, but you can hold it down, right? And kind of pinch it to make it smaller. Or, if you look up here, I might choose this photo here and I click select. Here's my picture. Do you see how big it is? Yeah. All right, watch my mouse real quick. Oh, let's see. If you're watching my mouse, all eyes should be up on the computer screen. Let's see. All right, if I hold it down and drag it in, it makes it smaller. smaller. You can do the same thing. Also, do you notice that there are lines that show up on my screen? Okay, these help me center my picture on my page. There's a, there's a line in the middle that goes up and down. That would be a horizontal line. But I also have this red line that's a vertical line that shows me where I can place it side to side. So you can use those lines to help you center it on your page. Do you have to center your picture on the page? No, you don't. But nonfiction books are more fun when we have more pictures. And so if you can make them fit, but not be too small, it'll be more interesting for your reader. Yes, ma'am, little blue button right there. Good, now it says right here that your file is uploading. Now, do you see how big it is? Oh, uh, I need to get small. Yeah, so you wanna click on the picture itself and then you want to click on this little dot, this little circle, and you hold it and drag it. There you go. Good job. You want to try? Is this one too big? Is that what you're saying? Which one? Oh, okay. Well, then we'll have to insert it um, on the next page. So just go ahead and delete them from this page. All you do is click that backspace button. Because when we go to a new page, we'll put on new pictures. So Tucker noticed something really interesting. 
what he was saying was that he wanted some of his photos to go on other pages. You guys probably want that too, right? Yeah. So we don't have to import all of our photos on one page. When we click to the next page, we can go and import our photo there. Does that make sense? Yeah. And a lot of times, if we're looking up the same word on our search engine, the same pictures will come up again. So we won't lose them. They won't be lost, okay? All right, what I'd like to do, though, is one of the things that's going to make this so much more simpler uh, of a process for us is that we are going to label our page numbers, okay? So a lot of you guys remember there was a rubric, and I'm going to pass out the rubric to you, and the rubric shows you exactly what I'm looking for, but we are going to add some of these numbers to the bottom of our pages. So this very first page, yes ma'am. All right, click backspace and it's gonna disappear. Good, on this very page, we are going to put text at the bottom. Does anybody remember how we can insert text? How do we insert text? You have to press the I. Okay, so Zachary says that we need to press the I. The eyes up here, it looks like a little cursive eye. Do you see text there? Yeah. No. 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 Oh, okay. So if there's no text there, what should we pick? What do you think, Zachary? What's your second guess? The plus. The plus sign. Let's try the plus sign. Do you, do you see anything that might be text? Yeah. Oh, yes. If we go down one two, three, four, you're going to see your text button. Now, before we click text, listen carefully. On the cover of a nonfiction book, is there a page number? No. Not normally. So what we're going to do is we're actually, before we insert our text, we're actually going to click to the very next page. So go ahead and click to the next blank page. And you can do that by clicking that little arrow over here on the side. Do you see it? So here we go. Now I've added a picture of a thunderstorm on my page. Do you see that? Okay, that's actually my cover page. So I'm going to click past one more so that I have a blank page with you. All right, what we're gonna do is we're going to insert our text at the bottom. So again, let's see if we remember, what do we do? What do we click to insert text? Charlie. Um, uh, plus. The plus sign, very good. So here we go, we're gonna insert plus and a text and you know for our page numbers we can make our page numbers look kind of like a comic book but it might be easier for the reader if we make it more simple okay so what I would do is for page numbers let's hit the bottom text right here that's what we would like and what we're gonna do is what page number do we need first we need page one. Somebody said that, who was that? Good job, Tanner. All right, so I'm gonna just click the number one. Go ahead and find your number one on your keyboard. All the numbers are up at the top. What do I click after I've actually typed in my number? What do I actually click? Quincy? Yeah, we go ahead and click done. All right, what I can do is I can drag it down to the bottom of my page. I could even make my text a little bit smaller so I can get it closer to the corner, just like you see on a normal book page. And drag it. Oh, you gotta try again. Click on it. Click on the number. And then hold it and drag it. There you go. You can stick it down in the corner. All right, so we've got page one, but it's important that we label all of our other pages so that we don't mix up our rubric and what we want on each page, okay?
So what I'd like to do is we're going to click the next page. Brantley, what number are we going to put next? Two. Okay, and some of you guys might have a plus sign like mine. That means that you haven't clicked over a new page yet. So you can click the plus sign to move it to a new page. And again, good job, Brantley. We are going to click the plus sign, go to text, and insert page number two. two and click done. All right, so let's cover real quick. You guys are going to get a rubric. This is obviously a work in progress, right? We are going to continue to work on this so that we can build our nonfiction book the way that we want it, put in all of our pictures. Um, let's review what goes at the beginning of our nonfiction book. Let's review what goes at the beginning of our nonfiction book. What do you think, Emily? Okay, we definitely have a title on our cover page, but think about a text feature. What text feature goes at the beginning of our book? Sumita? Table of contents. Bingo. Table of contents. What text feature are we going to put at the end of our nonfiction text? What do you think, Camden? What do you think? Do you remember what it's called? No? Leah, can you help her? A glossary. A glossary. Very good. So what does a glossary tell us? What does a glossary tell us? What do you think? Oh, I love my friends who have kept their hands in their lap. Right, Emily? What does a glossary tell us? Reese? Very good, yes, they have bold words and those bold words tell us what they mean. So we are going to be creating our glossary on another page. You guys did a really great job at following directions today. Give yourself a pat on the back. Good job. Thank you for joining our second grade class at Glen Allen Elementary School. We hope you enjoyed our lesson on a nonfiction text feature ebook. Glenn!